Good morning, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar over the 2018 GERTs. My name is Carrie Krause, and I will be covering the new GERT custom member. Feel free to type in your questions during the webinar, and I will answer them at the end. So first, there are two different types of inputs for GERTs. You have an individual GERT input, which is the regular GERT member. With this GERT, there will be no connections to other members or to the GERT itself. This GERT type acts as a miscellaneous member. The other one is the custom GERT member. This will connect to other members. There will be no connection design, but this custom member allows the user to define the connection specifications. This will be the GERT we will be using today. So we'll go ahead and open up modeling here. I'll begin adding GERTs down here at my C1 location. To get to the custom GERT, you can use the model pulldown, member, add, and then prompt for member type, or use the F2 on your keyboard, or you could add this as a toolbar icon. In the member type selection, we have our custom GERT. The one that I mentioned a few minutes ago here is this other GERT right over here on the left-hand side. That is the one that acts like a miscellaneous member. So custom GERT will be the one we will be using. So I'll go ahead and say OK. And I'm going to be keeping a one foot from grid line as my GERT line. So I'll go ahead and select my first point here outside of grid one. The first point picked will always be the left end of the member. So I am adding these GERTs on the outside of the building. These GERTs will be attached to the outer flange of the building. So I picked my first point and my second point will be the center of the next column. We will be working counterclockwise to ensure that the GERT is added to the inside of the work line. If you were to go clockwise, it would add the GERT to the outside of the work line. So I'll select point number two here. And we have our GERT edit window here. So under general, we have our section size. Today we'll be using a C8 by 11.5. And just like the other member types, we have control over the piece mark, the steel grade, the sequence, the rotation. And then as far as the toe direction, that is going to change depending on what section size you are using. The shapes that can be used for custom girts include wide flange, channel, angle, tube, S shape, cold form channel, and cold form Z. Those are going to be the section sizes that you can use for the custom GERT. Okay, your other options in here, like your other members, are going to be galvanized, graphical, your model complete, and work point to work point length. You have your left and right end settings, which include your end elevation. You have your corner framing. Now my left end is a corner framing, but it does not detect another GERT on the other side yet. Once it detects another GERT, you will have control over if you want it to be an extended corner framing or a shortened. So you get to choose which GERT goes extended and which one is shortened in a corner situation. Next, we have our connection type. Your options here are going to include angle, plate, WT, 
or plain end. For these first few girts here, we're going to keep it at angle. You also have the option to add a cap plate and define that cap plate thickness. The connection specifications, you can modify your steel grade, your attachment, so if you want it bolted or welded, what you're attaching to, so the column flange or column toe, the location of the connection, so do you want it to be on the top of the girt or on the bottom of the girt, and the option to extend past your center line. This is only for the corner framing. Your end prep here, we have the material setback. If cut required, you have the option for a cope or cut flange flush. For the cope, you have your cope radius, the cope depth and the length. The cut flange flush, you have the option to flange cut near and far side. With this particular girt, we're using an angle for the connection. So down here under the connection material, you'll find all of your settings that go along with the angle connection. So you have your section size, your long leg too, if you want it to the supported or supporting, the connection to supported. So you have your bolt information, your hole information, the rows and the row spacing, the columns and the column spacing, your gauge on leg to support it, girt line to the first hole in the vertical edge distance. Same with connection to supporting, your bolt information, hole information, your rows and your columns. Okay, so that's a look at your custom girt edit window. We'll go ahead and say okay. Now you'll notice here that I do not have a member add options bar. The member add options bar is only active when you are using columns, beams, and braces. They do not work for custom members. However, I do have the option to repeat. So if this next skirt was going to be the same as the previous one, I could use my repeat, but in this case it is not. We will use that repeat function here in a minute. So I'll select my two points here. So from center of column to center of column. Okay, and we'll stick with our C8 by 11.5. Once again, working in that clockwise direction here or counterclockwise. Okay, and the next one will go from center of column on C3 to center of column on, or we're going to go beyond because this is our corner here. So we'll go ahead and go beyond our grid four in C8 by 11.5 and we'll say okay. I'm going to right click to return out of that command and we'll take a look at our connections here. So we'll see that the location of the angle I have set to the top of the girt. If I wanted it on the bottom, I could do that inside of my member edit window here. So my location is at the top. I could change that to bottom and it would flip the angle to the bottom of the girt. We'll keep going around our building here. So F2, custom girt. Select my first point. Remember that first point is the left end of the girt. So center of column to center of column. You do need to pick the points in between columns because it will not automatically cope out if there is a column in the middle. So we see here that our corner framing, we have control over if it'll be extended or shortened. We'll take a look at that here in a minute. I'm going to continue adding my girt along this line. 
and go beyond my grid A for this corner here. So if we go back down to our C4, we'll see the corner information here. It did remember that I made a change and put the location of the connection material on the bottom. So I could come in here and change that back to top if I'd like. So connection specifications, location, that'll flip it back up to the top. If I wanted to add a cap plate to the end of this skirt, I could double click to edit and we have that checkbox here to add the cap plate. So if I check that on, I now have control over what I want that cap plate thickness to be. Say OK and it caps off the end of that skirt. Okay, there is an auto setback on these girts. So if I come down here and I take a look at the end of this girt, I see that it is short of the work line. So if I edit this girt, that's going to be my right end. And under end prep, we have material setback. The auto here is a quarter. So if I wanted that to go all the way to the end of my member line, I could take that checkbox off of auto, change it to zero, say OK, and it's going to take that girt all the way to my work line. So that is adding the girts on the outside of the building. Next, we're going to add in the girts that are flush with these columns. So we will continue going counterclockwise, F2, custom girt, we'll go center of column at A4, to center of column at A3. Now the girt that we just edited, we did modify the setback, so I need to make sure to put that back on auto. And we're going to change up the connection type here. We'll go ahead and set both of these to plate. So with this plate connection, we now have control over the plate thickness. If we want to add a weld connection to supported, you have your bolt information, your hole type, your rows and row spacing, column and column spacing the horizontal edge distance, and your vertical edge distance. Go ahead and I'll click, and it repeats the skirt. Now if I wanted to modify this skirt, and then let's change it to connection of a WT. Let's change that to WT. And we'll put these back on the top here. Okay, so then there's our WT connection. You can modify the connection material by changing the WT section size. The connection to supported, you have your bolt type, bolt diameter, hole type, rows and row spacing, column and column spacing, your horizontal edge distance, support to first hole, and your vertical edge distance. Okay, so that's keeping the girt flush with the column. Next, we're going to line up the center line of the column with the center line of the girt. Throw in construction line here. F2 to bring up our custom girt. And center of column. That's the wrong grid line, I'm sorry. Custom girt. And A1. 
down to B1, center of column to center of column. And we'll keep this connection type. We're going to switch that over to plate. And center of column to center of column. Also with this, since I'm using a channel, we can change that toe direction. So if I wanted to flip that, I could flip the toe direction from down to up. Okay, so that would look like so here. Okay, so we've added the girt along the outside of the building here. So we have these corners. We've added it to be flush with the columns. And we have added it to the center line lined up uh, with these columns on grid one. A little reminder to go along with the girts is the custom member sag rod. And this can be located also in the F2. So if I clicked on F2 here, I'm going to find a sag rod custom member. And after picking your two points here, we're going to have our option for straight, bent, straight, plus hook, and bolt. So I'll go ahead and add this here. Okay, so your rod type here is straight bent, straight hook, or bolt. In this situation, I'll add a straight sag rod. Just a few things to point out in here is going to be your point one and point two data. So point one and point two data here under the general tab. You have a connection type, and by default here, it is set to plain. Now, if you leave this at plain, it will not automatically add the holes into the girts. So if you do want those holes to be placed in the girts, you will have to change this to web flange hole. Okay, so we'll want to do that for both the point one data and the point two data. The other option to point out here is if you want a bearing plate washer there is a yes or no toggle here okay the other option is that you want to avoid is you do not want to zero out your information for the plate material if you do not want the plate leave these values the way that they are in the nut wash plate tab come back into the general tab and just switch the bearing plate washer over to no if you do not want that. The other item to point out in here is your grip. So you can modify that grip to make sure that the nut information is next to the girt. So that would bring this nut and washer here closer to the girt. Okay, so that is the custom sag rod. There is an in-depth video over sag rods and that can be found on our YouTube page and that is called new to and that was 7.3 under distributed members and plugins. So in conclusion, GERTs can be added in different locations in different forms using the GERT custom member. It allows for more control and connectivity.